here's a simple question from Oscar in Greensboro, North Carolina. Hi, Paul. I have a lot of audio amplifiers, mainly car audio amps, and some of them have TO3 transistors, and some people think that they are better than silicon ones. My question is, is there a difference in sound between a TO3 and a silicon transistor? What are the pros and cons? Seems like amplifiers with TO3 transistors are disappearing. Well, yes. In fact, <laughs> I thought, you know, I'll answer this question for him because most people probably don't even know what a TO3 transistor is. And I thought, I'll just, we'll go down and rummage around in the old parts bins here. And I couldn't find one. Sorry, I spent probably half an hour rummaging through our, our parts bins and I could, could not for the life of me find a TO3. And that's all we used to use. Every amplifier power plant that, well, I don't know about power plants, but certainly every amplifier that we ever made up until, oh, the late 1990s had TO3 transistors. So a TO3 transistor is a metal cased transistor. You've, they're, they're, they, um, they're shaped like this, kind of like an open hand, and then they're on top is a little can and the, there's TO220s, which are smaller versions, and TO3s, which are bigger versions. They have a little hat on top of them. And they're basically an, a metal transistor. And the silicone is inside, and it's kind of wired. And there's two little uh, feet that come down on a TO3. And then the case is, the, if I remember right, the case is the collector. Yeah, that's right. The case is the collector. Remember, a transistor has a collector base and emitter. So the case is the collector, and that's tied down onto a heat sink usually, and that's why they're metal, because you want to transfer the heat from the transistor into the heat sink. Uh, and of course, you don't want the heat sink to have, uh, on a collector, we're going to put the plus voltage or a negative, but what, the plus voltage. So you don't want your heat sink to be anything but ground. So we have these little, what we call sill pads that isolate the transistor, the TO3, from the grounded heat sink, and then we put on, on the screw, uh, you, you, you hook it up so that there's a, a wire going to the TO3's case, which is the collector. That's where the main voltage comes in, and then the emitter is what, where the juice comes out, and that usually goes to an emitter resistor, <laughs> and then the base, of course, is the input. So. Um, those were very difficult to manufacture. They were expensive because they were kind of hand done. You had this substrate, this metal substrate. Then you had the silicone and it had to be placed on there and the little leads were soldered onto the pins and they were very labor intensive. And when they switched over to packages that we commonly use today, they are basically plastic with three little legs coming out um, and, a, and a, a, a square of plastic and a hole in the middle. And then on the back side of that plastic is a piece of metal which still dissipates the heat. But they're all encased, so that's what we used it in. Like I said, I couldn't even find a TO3. Do they sound better? I think a lot of people would tell you they sound worse. One of the things I didn't like about TO3s is the, the silicon, and, and by the way, I know you, you probably just didn't realize it. All these are silicone, <laughs> so uh, unless it's a MOSFET, and even then it's probably silicone, but it, there are other ways to make MOSFETs, uh, GANFETs and, and whatnot. But for the most part, they are all silicone transistors, and the chip itself, the piece of silicone, is pretty much identical. One is sitting suspended inside of a metal case, that's the TO3, connected up with wires, and the other is ensconced and entombed in this uh, molded plastic capsule with the three legs sticking out. And one of the things that I didn't like about TO3s is under high current conditions and quick audio conditions, that that little piece of silicon uh, could deform, could change, that was at least, 
you know, we know that that happened. And our theory was that led to some kind of distortion that we could probably hear. Don't get all wigged out over it because <laughs> that was just a guess. But when we switched over to the ones where they're molded and that didn't take place, those seemed to sound better. So whatever. That would be my best guess. In any case, they hardly make TO3s anymore, and that's fine with me. They were a real pain to deal with. <laughs> so good luck with all that. Sorry for the long ramble. Talk to you later. Bye.